What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football sports betting and NASCAR home here at fakepigskin.com. I am your host, Kyle Robert. You follow me on Twitter. Uh, and with me, as always, to break down another NASCAR race, it's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? I, you know, as we get closer to the NFL season, people are probably going to start forgetting about these uh, these NASCAR races, but not us. No, no, this is our thing, apparently. Uh, it, I, I love the optimism you have, you know, obviously we talk fantasy football, obviously we're proceeding ahead. Like, uh, like it's going to happen. We're talking all of our, our, our top 12 at all positions. Uh, we're going to get a ton of content up on the YouTube page. So if you, uh, like that as well, give us a, give us, you know, check all that content out as well. But, uh, Brian, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what to think. Like I, part of me is like, Oh, it's definitely going to happen. Part of me is like, there's no chance. And, the rest of me is like, yeah, maybe we'll see. Yeah, I, you know, I see all these conferences for college football canceling their fall seasons, and it really makes you wonder how feasible is an entire NFL season and fantasy football, which makes me even more dedicated to watching these NASCAR races, making these bets on these things because we've seen this go on for a couple months now with without a hiccup, with yep. only seeing one guy get COVID, and you know, it, yep. if I'm gonna hold on to something, it's gonna be this. Yeah, I mean, between this and golf, it's, it's really getting me through. And that, the nice thing about individual sports versus team sports is that if one guy gets it, it's so much easier just to remove that one guy yep. than it is to, you know, remove a team or figure out rescheduling and all that stuff. I mean, um, I mean, as the Cardinals proved, if one guy gets it, then like 10, 13, 15, <laughs> you know, and they're shutting down for a week. So um, we have a lot to get into this week. Obviously, we're at a brand new course, so we're flying by the seat of our pants but before we go ahead let's go back um saturday's race was incredibly frustrating for your boy because i was watching <laughs> chase elliott was right there uh, and I, he kept wanting to go back to third for some reason and i and the first time he read there on one of the restarts he was in second took the lead no problem the rest of the time he's like no i want to go back to third for some reason and then it, it, it just I think he finished like seventh at the end of the day on Saturday. Um, it was incredibly frustrating because I, I, you know, I got a little arrogant, got a little aggressive, uh, got ahead of myself, and and, and the, the gambling god smacked me in the face. I, I, I definitely deserved it. Well, um, I mean, it it definitely didn't help that right after you and I were, were texting back and forth when I mentioned it, are you watching this right now? <laughs> a caution came out, which led to those decisions by them to take the high, the, the high lane instead of staying on that front row, which got yep. him into that position to begin with. Yep. Yep. Um, and I, and that was a whole new experience for me too, with that whole like choose your lane thing on the restarts. Like that was how unique is that? Yeah, it's really cool, but uh, they had like three or four chances, to, and the first time it didn't work. So, like, I don't, I don't understand the the thought process there. But I'm not an NASCAR crew chief. I do want to give shouts uh, to our boy OG, another Again. winner, Martin Truex top five. This dude's just like cashing tickets, and we have to have him take over the show. <laughs> no uh, kidding. And start telling, telling everybody who to back because uh, he's 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 doing really well. So, I want to give him some. Some shouts want to get once again, but uh, Brian, we're going bowling. We're going to go to the Go Bowling 235 once again. NASCAR is back on their back on their nonsense with these with these names. I'm still convinced we could have an angle of Pursuit 500. Um, this week's a little challenging though because we love to look at those history, like the okay, well, how do guys traditionally do on tracks like this or try at this track? How do you know you know? So we're do, we're going to Daytona, a place that we know and love. But we're on we're on a Daytona road course, which means no history, no track record, no nothing. Um, so I, I guess we can we can kind of talk about your how how you kind of mentally figured this out. But um, I, I think we have to lean heavily on Sonoma and on Watkins Glen this week. Yeah, this was it. You know, it because it, we've been kind of crazy with fantasy football coming here and all that stuff. This this week's research for the race w began off to a a rocky start for me as I was looking into traditional Daytona results before realizing, <laughs> oh wait a second, 
this is only two two thirty five. What is that? And then realizing yeah. it was a road course and having the completely transition into what I was trying to look at. And then, like you said, going into Watkins Glen and Sonoma, a course which I found out that has only been Cup Series racing. Um, so there's no history for guys who are like new to new to NASCAR rookies or you know the younger dudes. So I mean. And then looking at the past winners of road courses that are currently racing, there's not very many of them. And there's really only a couple of guys that have multiple wins at these courses. So this week was a really difficult challenge for the novices that we are at yeah. NASCAR trying to find, you know, good, good values here. Sure. Um, so let's dive in and let's do what we always do. Start inside that top 10. Uh, for me, it's pretty simple. I, I think we've discussed it. It's Martin Truex. Uh, this dude, you know, of the, you know, you just mentioned it. There's, there's not a ton of people with, uh, a, a consistent track record, um, of, 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 you know, big performances of getting wins at Watkins Glen. He has a win. He has three top fives, uh, over his last, uh, three races. So that's, that's something you can definitely look into. Um, you know, you can also look at, you know, head over to Sonoma. Uh, where he's had success as well. Two wins, uh, you know, top, you know, obviously two top fives, two top tens. So, uh, you know, two of his three races, he's won. Three of his six races, he's won at road courses. A guy that definitely feels comfortable going left and right in, doing what he needs to do. Uh, obviously, hit the odds are where they are for a reason. He's four to one to win the race. But, you know, we've seen guys that are priced this aggressively um you know come through kevin harvick comes to mind for a couple of races especially michigan he's um, on another level though let's just let, let's yeah. not pretend like he's racing on the same on the same difficulty level as everybody else <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of crazy how how it's it's like he's found another gear uh, yeah. in his career and he's like oh no i'm actually i got another decade of of being the best so um he's been incredible uh his number is seven to one this week. So that's kind of interesting if you want to just ride the hot hand and see if he can pull another win out of his butt. But um, I, I'm, I'm roughly looking at Truex. Let's talk about the guy you're targeting inside that top 10. So, I mean, you know, I'm looking at Denny Hamlin who he's had a lot of tough luck second place finishes during this season. So, you know, he's been running near the top pretty much every race. It's been him, him or Harvick. It seems like each of the last few weekends, um, he does have a victory at Watkins Glen back in 2016. So, you know, he, he, he's got a win here. He has a couple other top tens at road courses with uh, Sonoma and Watkins Glen. So, I mean, you know, just trying to find that guy, like it, like I really liked Martin Truex Jr., but it's just so hard for me to pick the favorites. And even if it is like the easier money, which th- I think we've become the Martin Truex Jr. Eric Almarola show. Um, <laughs> we seem to back them every week. But uh, so, I mean, I think for that reason, I tried to find the guy that was after those top two favorites because yeah. Truex and Chase Elliott are both, they have a lot of success. And for me, Hamlin, who he has the most recent like season success as well as a decent running career at, at road courses for me to yeah. go with him at eight to one. Yeah, and he's another guy that's just in in terms of recent su- success, recent results. He's been right there, you know, being really competitive. So obviously he's running well uh, along with his track record at, at these courses. And you're getting a good price. You're getting him at eight to one. So I I definitely like um, like heading that way. Uh, Brian, we like to dig deep. We like to find value. We like to see what we can do. I'm going with Clint Boyer this week. Twenty to one. Um, you know, if he's he, you know, if you don't want to go there, he's five to one for a top three. Um, he's three to one for a top five. I like those numbers quite a bit. Uh, this is a guy that, in terms of his success at road courses, has has done a lot. Like, um, if you go to his re- uh, recent results at uh, Sonoma, yes. Uh, He's got three top fives uh, or three top threes in his last five runs. Um, He had one where he finished 40th because of electrical issues and one where he finished 11th. So, uh, you know, a 10th, a third, a 40th because second, a third and 11th. That's really compelling. 
Um, and then if you go over to his results at Watkins Glen, obviously the 20th at the last race wasn't great, but 11th, a fifth, and then uh, a sixth and three of his last four before that. So consistently running near the front, um, had it has a good track record. Uh, a guy that we've seen pop at a couple different races this year. You know, I think this could be an interesting spot where a top three, a top five makes a ton of sense. Yeah, it, like you said, he's a guy that we've been kind of keeping our eye on. And, you know, we've mentioned him a few times just because he is that quiet name who is just consistently in the running for those top 10 finishes. He's always running in that mid tier, like teens level with a few things. If they were to go his way, he's close to a top five finish, you know, so. Yeah. If we're looking at values like that, I, he's he's a guy that I, I really like this weekend as well. Yeah, and I'm looking at the starting grid, and he's starting 12th this week, so that's another good sign. That that means he only has you know two positions. He's inside the top 10, and then you just need him to get near that top five, top three, whatever you decide to go with. But uh, in terms of value, I mean, if you're getting three or five to one when you're talking about a guy that needs to win versus a guy that top three, top five, uh, as we saw last week, um, you know, it, it's fun to go for that bigger payday, but it's more fun when they falter a little bit and you still get the cash. So, um, definitely something to think about. Uh, let's keep this gravy train rolling. Let's talk some Eric Jones. Yeah. Eric Jones, speaking of people with good success at road courses, here's a guy who at Watkins Glen, he has three top 10 finishes of 10th, 5th and 4th. And then he at Sonoma, his last two races there, he's finished top 10 at seventh and eighth. So if we're looking at some sort of, you know, similar kind of track record for what we're going to see this weekend, and we're looking at Sonoma and Watkins Glen, Eric Jones is a guy who at 33 to one, you know, he's got five, five races of history at road courses where he's finished top 10. So I really like him this weekend, just looking down the board for the odds. I know he hasn't been running that well um, this season. He's been kind of off and on with two of his last threes finished like 25th or worst. And uh, he's got an 11th place on Saturday at Michigan, but he's, he was a guy early on after the restart who was pretty hot. You know, he was, he was a name that was, we were talking about consistently as mm -hmm. picking top tens. And uh, he's kind of faltered over the last couple of weeks as we're getting closer to the playoffs. But, I think he's going to find his niche again this weekend, and he's another one. He's, you know, looking at the starting grid, he's starting 20th, and um, if you're doing, like, daily, you're looking for those guys that can move up the track, and for a guy who's consistently finished in the top 10, I like him not only to finish top 10, but in a DFS league, you're probably getting decent decent money. Like, he's going to be a, a pretty low salary. I think he's a good he's a good person to place in those lineups as well. For sure. And he's also in an interesting spot because it sounds like his team's moving on from him after the season. So he's kind of in a, I got to prove it to, to yep. somebody else to show them that they're wor I'm, I'm worth taking a shot on. Um, so I think a solid finish as we head into the NASCAR playoffs thing is going to be really important. Um, let's keep this gravy train rolling. And as you mentioned, we are a Martin Truex podcast. We are an Eric Alvarola <laughs> podcast. 50 to 1 this week. Um, you know, this is more a play on just kind of in general with Eric Almarola. Uh, obviously starting inside that top 10 is really nice. Um, he, he's a guy that at his last two Sonoma races, ninth and eighth, um, you know, at his last, uh, Watkins Glen race 12th, um, uh, you know, not, not the greatest finishes, but. Um, when you're looking at a guy who's 50 to one to win the race, you're getting 12 to one on top three, you're getting positive money on top 10. Um, you're getting, let's see, plus 650 on a top five. Like, I like all those, I like all those odds for a guy that's clearly improving as a driver. Um, and like we've talked about, kind of you know, bo boosting himself into that next tier of drivers and based upon points and based upon everything else, he keeps starting near the front. So he's doing something right. Um, so, and, and, and I know like normally we would be talking about this guy in like the 20 to 30 range. So the fact that I'm getting 50 on him, like maybe I'm probably not, you know, maybe I'll throw a few shekels on him to win outright, but 
the top three, the top five, or just the plus 160 to finish top 10. I love that. I've, I, I would say that that's pretty much guaranteed money. 10 of his last 11 races, he's finished 10th or better. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at almost what a guarantee to happen, it's going to be him finishing in the top 10. And like you said, he has been kind of mo moving his name up the board as the, that top tier racers placing in that in that top 10 finishing every every single week it's just yeah. he's having difficulty finishing races it seems as you know watching he seems to kind of falter at the end of the race um we did see him earlier in the year where he's getting close to the to win the race and that was the one where he placed third and with his back end finishing uh <laughs> in third place so i mean we've seen him almost to win just yeah. an accident that you know turned it away yeah. so he's he's been right there Yep, and he's a guy that since switch doing switch switching to Stuart Haas racing, it's a lot mouthful there. He's gone eighth, ninth, twelfth, and twenty second on his last four road courses. So, a, a guy that's trending in the right direction, a guy that's that seems to be evolving. And I, I think, based on his price, if he was twenty five or thirty, and we were talking about him at like plus one twenty five uh, or to plus two hundred to win that to get top five, I wouldn't be interested. But at this number, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right, let's keep this gravy train rolling, Brian. Let's go down the board even further, find that value we love. Uh, and let's go with your boy, Christopher Bell at 66 to 1. All right, so it's kind of sticking to the same thing with Eric Jones here. The guy who's going to be taking over for Eric Jones in that number 20 vehicle next season, Christopher Bell at 66 to 1 for a guy who he's finished – Let's see here. Second at Watkins Glen last year in his first race. He was in it during it as his Xfinity, Xfinity series career there. He's finished ninth and second total. And over the last two races at Michigan, he was 17th and 13th. He's a guy who as a rookie, he's been kind of, you know, going up the board as far as favorites for the weekends. He's been running consistently within that top 20. He did have a, a, Bad couple races with Kansas and at Loudoun where he was 23rd and 28th. But if we're looking for a good value and just somebody who, like we said, there's very limited knowledge here for this Daytona track, but he, he ran really well at a road course last season at Watkins Glen. So I looked at the rookie who's racing really well. He's great. He, he's got now, uh, he knows where he's going to be driving next year. He's getting a promotion, so he's got to prove to his new team owners that he was worth the, you know, the transition from Eric Jones. So, you know, sixty-six to one, I'll probably be paced. You know, that to me, that's like a five-dollar bet to take home a good, you know, three, three seventy-five, three eighty, whatever that is. You yeah. know, so that's good for me. Yeah, I mean, you can get him at plus two to plus two hundred for a top ten. You can get him eight and a half to one for a top five. Like even if you want to minimize your risk a little bit, like doubling your money on a top 10 finish is, is something that I love taking a look at. Um, and it's not Daniel Suarez, so I'm sure it'll go great. This week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, mentioning Christopher Bell, he's, he's also starting 15th. So yeah. he only has five, five positions to move up into that top 10 place Bing, for bang, a two to one payout. Yeah. I love it. I love it a lot. Uh, as always, if you like a driver this week, if you want, let us know in the comments your favorite bets, your best bets, um, and, and where you're, who you're targeting this week at the Go Bowl in 235. Uh, but Brian, before we get out of here, we got to do what we always do. It's best bet time. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to take a, a little bit of a risk again, and I'm going to go Eric Jones, top five, five to one. Woo. That is, that is feisty, my friend. But I like it. Um, Let's get risky to get some good paydays here. Yeah, I mean, I I, I dove in with the Chase Elliott last week. It it didn't go great, but uh, <laughs> here we are. Uh, I'm gonna go Clint Boyer top five, uh, three to one payout. I like it. Um, you know, obviously, if you want to look at more of a uh, like a top ten, that that that's also an interesting way. Uh, Alma Rolla at plus 160 for top 10. I, I think both those are incredibly compelling. And as you mentioned, Christopher Bell plus two plus 200. Very nice. But yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Clint Boyer. You're going to go Eric, Eric Jones. And uh, we'll see you guys next.